The 2022 Lexus NX, it is not only a new generation of Lexus NX, it is actually one of the first Lexus models to showcase Lexus's new design vision. Everything is updated in the Lexus NX, the inside, the outside, and everything. In today's video, we have this 2022 Lexus NX 450H Plus, the plug-in hybrid version. We're going to take a deep technical review of it. We're going to look underneath it, see what's new and exciting. Then we're going to look at the body. We're going to look at the interior, especially that new infotainment system and everything around it to find out if Lexus did a good job updating this or not right after this. Let's start our technical tour starting under the hood. This is a four cylinder A25A FXE 2.5 liter four cylinder engine. This engine is not entirely new. This actually has been out since 2018 in multiple models across the Lexus and Toyota lineup. Very efficient engine, especially when made it to this specific hybrid system, the plug-in hybrid system. Some key features of this engine is it's very high thermal efficiency. It has D4S direct injection and port injection at the same time to minimize the risks of carbon buildup. It has an EGR system that is actually an evolution of the EGR system doesn't have the previous problems of carboning up of the EGR because this actually takes exhaust gas after the catalytic converter. So the gases has been cleaned a little bit. When they come back, they're cleaner, not like before. This engine also has VVTi electronic or VVTi E. Basically an electric motor that turns the speed of the camshaft right here on the side, turns the speed of the camshaft and speeds up or slows down to advance and retard the timing. Very cool design, very high end, very technologically advanced, works very good. This engine has been out for a few years now and there hasn't really been issues with this. On paper, it sounds a little scary, but it's actually a reliable system. Moving on to the side here, before we get into this, for lack of a better word, mess, this is the inverter coolant, which we'll talk about for the hybrid system. This is the engine coolant. There is a good old radiator cap here, which is nice to see in modern cars. More modern cars seems to be getting rid of that. Washer fluid is right here. You have a fuse block right there. And this conundrum of hoses and lines, this we will only see in the 450H+. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the heat pump system. It is a technological marvel to see this in a car. It's a very high tech system. The idea of this whole thing in a very basic term, and I did make a video explaining exactly how it works, but this does three functions. One of them is it works as a normal AC system, cold evaporator on the inside, hot condenser on the outside, and works like a traditional AC system. The second function is when you are using electric only, because this is a plug-in hybrid, you can go 36, 37 miles on electric range. This will actually, in a not as simple as I'm going to say it, flip the AC. So now you have your condenser that is hot inside and your evaporator that is cold outside. So now you have heat. It has a lot of limitations and it is a little loud operation-wise. And the third function that it does, which is a highlight of the 450H+, it cools the battery. The battery that lives outside the car, we're going to take a look at it in a little bit when we are underneath the car. But this also cools the battery. So when you see this maze of lines and hoses, the reason for that is because of the flip and because two of these lines actually go to the battery underneath the car. Over here is your inverter assembly. In my opinion, the inverter assembly is actually the brains of the whole operation of the hybrid system and the plug-in hybrid system. This basically takes the voltage out of the battery, ups it to a voltage that is much higher to give it a boost. And also in the plug-in hybrid model, there's an additional boost converter here that takes this voltage and ups it so you can have more power. This also takes care of the regenerative braking, does all the functions, these orange wires. This is what connects it to the front two motors and the rear motor, because this is all-wheel drive standard. 
This also supplies power to the AC compressor, which is electric on these, and it controls the whole operation. This is somewhat similar to the fourth generation hybrid system started in 2016 Toyota Prius, distinguishable with the two connectors right on top of the inverter. Very compact design, works very well, and a highlight of this generation is how smooth the transitions are between engine running, engine off, and all these transitions are very smooth in this generation. Moving on over here, we have the air filter housing, another fuse block, this is the engine computer. Here's your brake reservoir. It's a very neatly packaged thing. It looks very busy, but it's actually in the automotive design world. This is very neatly packaged, even with the complicated heat pump system, everything is neatly packaged and neatly put together. And the transmission for the Lexus NX 450H Plus is a P810 eCVT. Let us clarify one thing in case you are not familiar. The eCVT is not a conventional CVT transmission. There's no cones, belt, and all that stuff. It is just a name to refer to the operating principles. It is a continuously variable ratio, but how it achieves that is completely different from a conventional CVT. I did do a series on how hybrids and plug-in hybrids work. I will leave those in the description if you're curious to know how this whole system works exactly, including the heat pump system. The P810 is actually a really robust transmission. It is found in other models. It's not exclusive to the NX. It is found in models like the RAV4 Prime, which is in a way a sister car to this car. It is also found in the 2020 and up Toyota Highlander Hybrid and in the 2021 and up Toyota Sienna Hybrid. And something interesting before we move on underneath the NX. This model NX for some reason has three hood latches. One was not good enough, so now we have three. There's one there, one here, just for the safety release, and then one here. And equally on the hood, there is three strikers. Because why not? Having said all that, let's lift this NX up, let's look underneath it, and see what's new and exciting. Let's take a quick look underneath the Lexus NX 450H Plus as we continue our technical tour. The first thing you notice, and this is becoming something new with TNGA cars, both Toyota and Lexus side. Everything is completely covered, but this car takes things to the next level. Similarly, the RAV4 Prime also does something very similar. Let's start in the front. So let's look in the front cover here. This big cover that you see right here, this is what covers the engine right here and the transmission. Things are somewhat familiar. When you look under the NX, you look under a non 450H plus NX. You look under, for example, NX 350. Things will be similar. You have an opening here. This is gonna be your oil pan and your oil filter. Very simple to get to, nothing over complicated, you don't have to remove the whole cover. But then we look into the smaller details. This opening right here, this is actually a cooling opening. And looking at other models that share the similar platform on, and drivetrain, this opening, I don't believe it is for the engine cooling, I believe it is for the power steering cooling. Because something that Toyota and Lexus has been doing with the newer models, they used to have their power steering assist motor on the steering column, but now they're moving them outside. So it is actually mounted on the rack itself, right behind here, over the subframe. So they need some cooling for that motor as the car drives without having big opening gaps here, which compromises aerodynamics. So they have this little gap here that takes air past the oil pan, over the motor, and then it exits right out the back. Pretty smart that, that this opening is much smaller. On some models, like one model that comes to mind, like a 2018 and up Camry, they'll have a big opening right here where you can actually see the power steering motor right there. And one more thing before we move on to the middle, this section right here, this is actually the subframe and they leave this area exposed and you notice there's like a round circle around it. This is a lift point. If you're ever lifting one of these, I don't know how many NX 450H plus owners will be lifting this anytime soon, but this is a lift point. This is a subframe. Then we move on to the middle section where things are anything but similar to other models. 
the exhaust takes a giant turn to the side. And this is the first thing you notice that is exclusive to these. The hybrids will have a little bit of a turn, but not as massive as this. I mean, you see how this thing almost comes to the edge of the car. That's because, ladies and gentlemen, over here, we have a new tenant in the 450H+. Typically, your gas tank will be in this area, but in the 450H+, the new tenant is the massive battery lithium ion battery it lives right here it starts right here and it's all the way just in front of the fuel tank so for size comparison this is pretty big and most people will look at this this is a plastic cover how is this going to protect the battery which costs a lot of money well if you look through the slats there's actually a heavily enforced metal cover on top of the battery this cover i would put it as have you seen a cover on a trd pro tacoma tundra all the trd pro lineup have you seen a cover that sits in the front the, the splash shield in the front that's how thick and strong this thing is you are not going to damage this just by running over something easily this thing is well insulated it's very heavy and it's it's flat as well so if you hit this you might damage the plastic covers but not the actual battery inside and peeking through here which we're going to take a close look at it is high voltage wires going to the battery and most importantly hvac lines refrigerant lines because this battery like we talked about is refrigerant cooled and here is those two refrigerant lines that go to the battery folks this is what cools the battery this is the lifeline of this battery there is no air cooling this is a very sophisticated system that really works to optimize the life of this battery and over here you can see part of that shield in case you see this exposed and you think okay well this could get damaged I mean, it's going to take a lot to damage this because this shield extends all the way to the, to the subframe. So all of this behind this plastic is actually a very well insulated shield. And I'm putting my hand on it here. It is not budging. This is very strong while protecting that. And I have no concerns over this whole battery having any issues. As we move our way to the back, this is the fuel tank right here. This fuel tank is actually in an odd position because if this was a hybrid, in, in a hybrid NX or in a hybrid RAV4, this fuel tank would be right here. But because we have a new tenant, the tank is here, which is, in my opinion, centrally located between the tank-like reinforcement here and, of course, the rear subframe. It's really almost centered in the car perhaps a touch this way to make room for the exhaust but it's almost centered in the car i think this is a really good safe place for it as well between two really strong items then we move to the back you see the exhaust coming all the way from passenger side and then coming back in to the center this is the center line of the car so you see how it comes back very interesting design that you kind of had to push the exhaust to make room for all this stuff over here things return to somewhat normalcy with TNGA car. You have a trailing arm double wish suspension here. This specific model has the ABC suspension, so you do have actuators on the shock. Things are familiar, but still there is a little bit of extra goodness added here. Let's take a closer look. With this type of car, little stuff makes a huge difference because the combination of little stuff makes a lot. For example, this little plastic flap right here. You look at it, it's just a plastic little piece. What does this do? Well, here is little turns into big. When the car is on the ground, this wheel is pushed up. This control arm is almost straight. So as the air comes flying down this perfectly flat bottom, it comes through here. If this flap was not there, it'll get pushed up and hit the bumper. And now you have like an air brake. Put this little flap. That's just enough to push the air just past the bumper. And if that was not enough, they put another corresponding flap right here. In case you are not going fast enough, this air would go, in case it does go up, 
this will actually channel it back down and out little stuff makes a lot in cars like this and this is really interesting now this is not exclusive to the nx they've been doing this here and there with other models but it seems to me in the nx this is much more pronounced and bigger and then we look at the exhaust and most people will wonder wait a second this is an f sport where is my big bulging big exhaust to show you that i am an f sport actually that carries on from the little stuff if they put a big huge exhaust tip here and there well as the air comes out it's just gonna hit it that doesn't work i feel like they they cut the exhaust if you look at this angle of the air coming this way and trying to go out i mean the exhaust tip is cut perfectly flat so it just goes straight out pretty cool They're, they want nothing to compromise the flow of air underneath the car nothing to to start dragging on the car and they went all overboard with this and they really did a good job and that's how these cars are very efficient it's the little stuff that makes a lot when you add them up then we actually skipped over one major component that is this car and the RAV4 Prime they're standard with all-wheel drive the reason for that is you need that extra regeneration from the third motor underneath this cover lives mr mgr things are very very similar and simple and i know some people will jump up and say wait a minute it's not really that simple but it actually is because essentially and perhaps this is an updated version perhaps this is a much improved version but this design goes back all the way to 2006 Highlander hybrid but you know what this is what makes Toyota and Lexus king of reliability because they take a design that works they improve on it they don't just throw it out the window unless they absolutely have to like the government comes crashing down on them wanting different things this is a prime example of that I look at this unit and this is in a high-tech car like this and it's so familiar it is so similar to other models and failure rates on these and other models that have very similar transmission setup it's actually called the transaxle rear transaxle is very low the failure rates very low unless it's beaten abused or wrong tires or something of that nature but normal use they have very low failure rates and I'm so happy to see this here because they modernized this car, but they kept certain things that worked that didn't need modernization. They kept it old school and it's beautiful. Moving on to the front brakes here. Something interesting is the front caliper is actually a two piston caliper, similar to your Highlander Sienna. It's a much bigger caliper and this is actually an upgrade in the TRD Camry, but you see this two piston caliper folks I remember a day where we had the RAV4 V6 I wish this was an upgrade for that just uh, going down memory lane here but we have an aluminum knuckle again lightness is everything here aluminum works it's been used in the Priuses for a long time in multiple bottles here and there otherwise other than the slight surprise of the dual piston caliper everything here is similar you have the iconic Toyota separating ball joint from the control arm this is a very good design I wish they keep it forever you have McPherson strut to the top also AVC suspension and the rear brakes over here single piston caliper now this design is actually getting familiar you have the electronic actuator that pushes the piston to engage the parking brake we are getting used to this we love it it's very nice to have an automatic parking brake this is a design shared with a lot of models it is really bulletproof as long as you service it the correct way and just like the front this in the middle of the rear cross member is the lift point very clear on this one unlike the front it's a little bit hidden but this one very clear this is your other lift point let's talk about the tire and wheel because we have two small disappointments first this is an old school type TPMS sensor. I don't know why a 2022 
masterpiece like the NS450H Plus has an old school TPMS sensor. What I mean by old school is some of the Toyota Lexus models after 2018 had a new style where the valve stem tip itself separates from the actual body of the sensor. Whatever damage happens to this, you can separate them, replace only the stem separate from the sensor. Another added benefit is you replace the sensor, you just drive away and eventually it'll relearn and life's good. This is old school style. If something happens to the tip here, you have to replace the whole sensor. And you have to program them every time you replace one with a scan tool. Surprised to see this here. The other thing that is I'm trying to wrap my mind around with the choice, the run flat tires. Folks, I really dislike run flat tires. I don't see the point of them. I understand some of these cars will not have a spare tire. Let's put a little flight kit. Let's have triple A. They give you roadside assistance when you buy these cars. Why do we need road run flat tires. We have all this little tiny little things to increase efficiency. Then we have the heaviest tire possible and the shortest life tire possible on this just to not have a spare tire. Let's not have a spare tire but let's not also have the run flat. Small disappointments here but nothing is perfect. Let's move on. Then we take a look at the front. There are one strange thing. There's no grill shutters. Perhaps they saw that they don't need it, but it's kind of a surprise that a car like this doesn't have grill shutters. If you're not familiar with grill shutters are, other Lexus and Toyota models, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, whatever the case may be, they'll have automatic doors that close to let everything warm up faster and then open up when we don't need them anymore. Well, this one doesn't have any. We have a 360 camera right here. This is the radar sensor for your cruise control. It lives still underneath the emblem. Great place for it, love this idea. Doesn't need to be sticking out somewhere else. Behind the emblem is a brilliant idea. Right behind the bumper, right there, is the proximity warning speaker or the acoustic vehicle alert. They, I, I suppose they changed the name somewhere along the lines, but that is the speaker that makes this annoying sound every time you reverse an EV mode. Yep, we all drive hybrids, we all know that sound. That is the offending speaker that makes it. And one small attention to detail that I like, this is the ever so tiny fog light. But right next to the fog light, there's a tiny little light to light your corner. That is pretty cool. Let's start our tour of the outside. I think the outside looks very striking. I remember when the f I first laid eyes on it in person. It's different when you see it in pictures than in person. But in person, it looks like a pretty sharp looking car. Let's look at a few details that are very interesting in the outside design of the Lexus NX. Starting off with the spindle grill. Because this was not an add-on grill, this car was designed with the grill being there. It actually doesn't look bad. I personally like the spindle grill. I think it gives the Lexus Character, you cannot uh, mistake this for anything but a Lexus. But I like the lines and I like how the overall design language of the front kind of emphasizes the Lexus logo and it all points towards it. I really like how angular the headlights are and all the angles. It looks very striking. It's not over the top. I'm really impressed by the front look of the Lexus uh, NX, it looks really nice. And one more thing on the hood that is interesting. We have this body line right here that comes in. It creates this crease, but it also turns around right here and it kind of disappears. Same thing on the other side. It almost like everything is coming together and pointing towards the emblem. I just like how it makes the whole nose look like it has like two tiers. This is one tier, the width of the car, and then it comes into a nose section and then the emblem in the middle. And then over at the back doors, we have this, the body line comes in and then it just makes this massive dip. Really hard to see it on camera, but it's, it's a massive dip right here in the door. And I can imagine potentially for aerodynamics to push the air going, coming this way out, but it is a very unusual and interesting push, almost like the door has been pushed and the whole body is like narrow right here. Then we move to the door handle situation. 
Not everything is interesting is good, by the way. This is an interesting door handle because it is actually not a door handle. It is a button activator door handle. And we're gonna talk a lot about this door handle. Not necessarily in a good way, but it is a button. You push it and the door opens. Interesting choice of door handles. And looking at the back, I like a few things. Number one, there's no more Lexus logo in the back. There's just letters, big letters, Lexus. It's a very nice font, it looks very high end. And I actually like this better than the Lexus logo. And something else about the back is the bar tail light. This is a continuous line, looks very high end, looks very cool. I really like this and I wish they would do this on more and more models. Looks really nice. Let's look at the interior of the Lexus NX. I really like the good job that they did here. I really like the materials. The materials are super soft. Everything feels very high end and everything you touch feels new, different, exciting and very, very nice. Two things we're gonna start with. You notice the gleaming absence of the most annoying Lexus feature in the past, the touchpad. That is gone. Thank you Lexus for doing us all a service by removing the horrendous touchpad. And the second is a shifter. No longer do we have an old school cable operated shifter, even though there was no problem with it and I actually like them. But we have a electronic shifter. It operates, how should I say it, exactly the same as a 2004 all the way to today Prius, Toyota Prius. And it operates very, very simply. You push it to the side and back, you're in drive. You push it to the side and up, you're in reverse. Park is a button, push it to the side and hold it, you're in neutral. And if you push it just back, you're in S mode or sport or manual shifting mode, even though this doesn't really have gears and everything, but they are simulated, but that's the basic concept. Some manufacturers, especially with the rotary and some other complicated electronic shifters, this one is actually very simple and something that some Toyota Lexus owners might be actually pretty familiar with. Then we move on to the major update in the Lexus NX, which is the infotainment system. Folks, welcome to the new generation Lexus infotainment system. We finally have an update, the touchpad is gone, and this is a brand new unit. This is somewhat similar to the one in the 2022 Toyota Tundra. It's very nice, very extremely responsive. I mean, we've never had a infotainment system this responsive, this quick. You just change things very rapidly. But with that come a few things. You notice that there are absolutely no HVAC controls. There is a button for the front defrost, rear defrost, and then volume on and off. And then two buttons to change the temperature, two dials, and that's about it. Your heated seats, they're all here. That's how you control them. And the cooled seats are also here. And of course, because this is a Lexus, we do have our automatic mode for heated and cooled seats. Your fan controls are right here. So it's somewhat intuitive. This menu is always here. This basically simulates your HVAC controls. Over here, we have a quick menu for climate. You have some other options. Over here, we have a customizable menu, frequently used. Comfort and convenience, you can flip over, driver assist, heads up display, driving assist. This is, this is nice, this is intuitive where you have a kind of a shortcut immediately, but unfortunately you're gonna have to always constantly be using the screen because gone are all the manual controls. Then we go into the settings and there are some things that are pretty interesting in the settings. We go to vehicle customize, typically here you had a few customizations, but here you have a lot more customizations like the meter, you can change the type of meter. And here's the best part, tachometer, remember, this is a plug-in hybrid. 
the engine will run sometimes but not always but here you have auto switching when you switch it in sport mode it'll show you the tachometer when you're in normal or eco it's going to show you just that eco charge with power and charge or you can manually select it tachometer or hv meter or auto switching this is this is the customizations that were prior previously missing in all lexus and toyota models you had the normal stuff but you did not have this additional stuff you did not have any sort of customizations you can customize the button layout on the steering wheel because this is a uh, little bit complicated but you basically have two customizable controls one of them for the functions of the gauge one of them is for the infotainment system the infotainment system when you switch modes you can actually customize that what shows up and you can see it as soon as you put your hand over their touch capacitive so you see as you're driving you're not getting your hand off the wheels or eyes off the off the road you're just you put your hand and you know which selection you are selecting and that is customizable right here you can custom the layout to select what you want to appear on your quick menu which is very nice there is a lot of customizations here i am very very impressed by they finally listened we have a lot more customizations and features but the main highlight of this entire system is how responsive it is i mean this is extremely fast it's a very large screen and something that is cool this where your uh, temperature display is it's actually part of the screen so the screen comes down goes all the way across this is part of it even though the dial sits on top it gives you the illusion that this is a separate screen or something but it's actually part of the same screen and something that is significantly improved is the rear view camera the quality is very high usually this is something you used to see and it's they're cloudy and the colors are not right but over here this looks much much better and the 360 view is very nice and sharp and we always look at higher high-end cars like the Lexus you look at Mercedes BMW everybody they have really high quality camera except Lexus and Toyota but now we have high quality cameras and I can't wait for all models to have a high quality backup camera and 360 view cameras and something that is strange and interesting all the controls most of them that are usually here they went into the screen except the drive mode you know I would have wished they utilized this space with something else other than drive mode because this wouldn't be something I would feel bad if we have to adjust it on the screen but we have a giant knob here that is drive mode okay we can live with that you also have your uh, 360 view with this crazy 360 view that is still there let's talk about some things that i don't particularly like about the new lexus nx updates starting with the door handle situation you know when you upgrade cars you could get carried away and i think they did with the handles these handles are not actual handles they don't do anything there is no pull here you push put your hand in you push this little button to open the door now that's great when uh, the sun is shining and the battery is good but what happens when your battery dies well if you're inside the car i'll show you in a little bit but if you're outside only on the driver's door you have this little panel right here you have to remove it use the physical key take it out of the smart key put the key in unlock the door and then you pull a little handle that is available here i'm going to demonstrate this by doing this manually because uh, this little panel does not want to come out very easy and I don't want to break it so right now I've put the door in the manual door mode and I'm going to pull this very difficult to open very flimsy handle to open the door why what was wrong is just the handle that pulls out and it opens makes absolutely no sense the only nice thing that it does is there's no more lock unlock it, it's there's nothing to lock and unlock the doors are always unlocked when you hit lock a little light comes on and now the computer knows you want the doors locked and it'll just disregard the signal from the button that's all it does so when you hit lock there's no sound or physical lock 
which I guess is nice, but at this price, I would rather not have it at the price of having these interesting handles. Here's how the door handle works on the inside. You push the button and the door opens. That seems pretty simple, although I don't see the reason why we don't have a little handle. That's okay. But on bad days, when the battery dies, now you're stuck inside your NX. There is a manual release, and it's actually in the handle itself. Just like you push the handle, which is the button, you can actually pull it, and it becomes a mechanical handle. You pull it once. Now you switch the internal mechanism from automatic to manual. You pull it the second time. Now you actually unlock the door and open it. You close it, though, when you push the button now. It's going to make that first noise. Switched it back from manual mode to automatic, and now the door is open. Unnecessary complication is the way I see it. And then the steering wheel controls. Folks, I'm really happy that they updated the infotainment system. That is great. It works really good. It has wireless CarPlay. It is beautiful. But the steering wheel controls, they used to be great. I understand, you know, people want to change when they want modern things and more flexibility and adjustability. But the whole idea of steering wheel controls is to keep the driver focused on driving while being able to activate some of the convenience features. But this is confusing. I've, I've driven this car for a week and I still have to really focus on the heads up display to figure out how to navigate the menus. It's very annoying. Eventually, you'll get used to it and figure it out if you buy one, but I, don't, I dislike it. I think it's a little gimmicky, kind of like the touch control, works great on paper, but in real life and busy lives of people, this is going to be annoying, and uh, be prepared for it, because this infotainment system is really worth it. But unfortunately, you have to activate it with these, and they're going to be a little gimmicky at times. And last but not least, and this might be particularly to this specific NX in this configuration, the run-flat tires. I don't know why we need run-flat tires. I understand there's no more spare tires and that's gone. That's fine, you have a little inflate kit. Many models have this and it is what it is. But the run-flat tires are the worst idea in the planet. First, for a car that's as efficient as this, they're extremely heavy, they're extremely expensive. They wear up prematurely. Why do we need run flat tires? I can't believe when this car pulled in and I looked at it, run flat tires. It's like, why do we still have run flat tires? Do yourself a favor. If you really like the wheels and you like the car and you're stuck with the run flat tires, get rid of them because they're really nothing special. They're horrendous and they're noisy and they're heavy. You'll actually do yourself, your bag and your car a favor by getting rid of them. So what is the final verdict on the Lexus NX? Folks, outside, the Lexus looks really sharp. The front, the back, the sides, the design is really nice, especially in the F-Sport trim. Going inside, everything feels high-end. The materials are really nice in this thing. And the highlight at the center of the interior is that infotainment system. Large screen, very nice colors, very nice quality and very responsive, a lot of customizations that were missing in the past. No car is perfect. We have the uh, door handle situation, which is unnecessary. Might have gotten carried away a little bit there. The steering wheel controls, they can be a little bit of a learning curve until you get used to them, but not the end of the world. One thing that did not change with Lexus, and we don't want them to, because that's why you buy a Lexus reliability and quality and their conservativeness toward updating their design, just rushing with the latest and the greatest for the sake of being first. They don't do that, and that's a good thing. Because looking at this powertrain, I mean, this is exactly the same powertrain as a RAV4 Prime. If you really dig deeper into the components, they share a lot of their designs from the past because that's how Lexus does things, taking from their parent company, Toyota. They don't rush designs. As long as something is working, nobody's complaining about it. They're going to keep going, only make it better. And that's the package you get with the Lexus NX. It's a reliable car, very high quality build. That infotainment system is very nice. The car is quiet. It handles very well, especially in the handling package like the one behind me. It is a really nice drive. And the uh, 
plug-in hybrid is a really quick one and one that will surprise you in, in a car that is this sensible and this nice, feels very luxurious and all of a sudden you put your foot down and the thing just takes off. Very nice car to drive. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you and you have yourself a wonderful day.